Hi, 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 sweaty Jen back again. Happy New Year to all of my sweaty people out there. Happy New Year to all my non-sweaty people out there. I hope the first day of the year has been really fun for you, and I hope the rest of the year continues to go smoothly for you. Or if the first day isn't going good for you, I hope that it improves. So I'm sorry for the lack of videos I've been putting out this week. Um, it's just been kind of hectic with the holidays and stuff. I was watching YouTube videos though and I was just like, geez, how do these people like just be able to post on like such an important holiday? But I guess maybe they film it in advance, right? Or maybe not, I don't know. I guess it's, it's a mystery. <laughs> Uh, I did want to ask you guys if you have any video ideas or something you want me to film a video about. If you do, please let me know in the comments. I am working on a current video idea that somebody wanted to see. Um, so if you guys have any, or if the person who recommended the one I'm working on has another suggestion, feel free to let me know. The suggestion I'm working on right now is one that is super important, and that is relationships and hyperhidrosis. Um, I, I really can't emphasize enough that I think our, as someone with hyperhidrosis, our social life is terribly impacted by the disease, and probably devastatingly so in some cases. And that's a really important topic that I feel deserves a lot of time and thought and effort put into. So I've been brainstorming kind of what I want to talk about and what I want the general outline of the video to be, but it's it's such a big, broad topic and like my recommendations for getting through social situations, like sometimes they don't even work for me. So I'm like, I can't sit here going on and on about like, stuff that I sometimes still struggle with myself. But stay tuned because I want to make the video, um, it's important to me um, to put something out there to bring awareness to the fact that we struggle a lot with socialization issues. And it's important for me to hear your guys's kind of like what have you experienced in terms of trouble in your social life because of hyperhidrosis if you're comfortable sharing anything like that with me um feel free i would love to hear it it would probably help me kind of get my gears moving better um if you're not comfortable commenting i do have a business email it's sweatygen at gmail.com you can send it through there i won't say who said whatever if you're comfortable uh, no, no, no. Sorry. This is a uh, kind of a badly written list, so I'm I keep losing where I am. Okay, the next thing is glycopyrrolate. So I reached out to my dermatologist at some point last week and I asked her why I was experiencing breakthrough sweating and what she thinks I should do about it. And she was, she had kind of two ideas, but then she settled on the the one idea that we're doing now. So at first she was like, why don't you take one milligram in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening? But then she like was like, actually, you know what? Take two milligrams in the morning and two milligrams in the evening. So that's what I've been doing. I have noticed increased dry mouth and increased dry nasal passages. But honestly, that could be because it's winter here too, and I have not been drinking enough water. But uh, that's something I noticed. I'm going to keep it up and see how that goes. The only thing with the increased dose, I don't mind increasing it. Like I will listen to what my dermatologist thinks is best, especially if it helps decrease my sweating. The one thing that I that is in the back of my mind that I cannot seem to get out is, let me take a drink of water really quick. Mm. 
Okay. The one nagging thought that I cannot get out of my mind is I am worried, like, the two milligrams AM and PM is working right now, but I'm worried, okay, in six months from now is suddenly two milligrams AM and PM not enough? Am I going to need three milligrams AM and PM? And then what, four milligrams, five milligrams, so on and so forth? I'm just worried that, um, that it's never going to be enough or something. And I know that's silly because I know a lot of people have been taking it for many, many years. I'm probably overanalyzing it, but it's just this like little nagging thought. And I guess as somebody who suffered for so long with the sweating on the hands and the feet and feeling damp and cold all the time, the thought of that becoming like my everyday life again terrifies me. It terrifies me because having the sweating under control has improved the quality of my life in so many different ways. And so it's scary to think about having that taken away from me someday, which leads me to my next point. And that is I am going to start heavily looking into getting an iontophoresis machine. I've heard people rave about it and say like, if you have palmar hyperhidrosis, you need to try it. And so I did, I, I asked my dermatologist, what do you think if I do the iontophoresis and the glyco at the same time? Would it be ill-advised to do that? And she was like, no, go for it. You can do that. So that's awesome. Um, if and when I get the iontophoresis machine, I will most definitely make videos about it, how to use it, my result and experience with it. Thank you to the people down in the comments below who keep um, suggesting it and the people on Reddit and everywhere who keep suggesting iontophoresis. If I didn't keep hearing it suggested and keep hearing your guys', success, your guys success stories with the machine, I probably would be less interested in trying it. But because you guys are sharing what you're going through and how the iontophoresis helped you it's like oh my gosh like i should try that too so thank you to everybody out there even if you haven't like commented on my video if you're just out there on the internet talking about your hyperhidrosis chances are i've stumbled across it so thank you for sharing and being courageous in giving the internet a little piece of what you've experienced too and then what else oh the last thing i want to talk about is just because like i love this tv show this series this book series so much that i feel the need to include it in this video if you're not a fan of horror or like kind of scarier tv shows what I'm going to recommend probably won't appeal to you, but if you are, the TV show is called Dexter, and it's based off a book series. The book series is seven books. So I watched the TV show, and the first episode I was like, mm, I don't know, like I wasn't feeling it, but then I gave it another try a couple months later, and I watched it so fast, like... I couldn't stop watching it. I loved it so much. The storyline's amazing. The characters in the TV show are amazing. Everything about it is just uh, as like a true crime, serial killer, interested type of person that I am. The show's awesome. So I loved the show so much and I knew it was based off of a book series, but I wasn't getting the books because I was kind of like, eh, it might be like the same as the tv show so i don't know but i was missing the tv show a lot so i went ahead and i purchased the first book of the seven book series oh my gosh it's even better than the tv show and i didn't think that was possible 
the character development of Dexter is just phenomenal in the book. Of course, I mean, the TV show was based off the book. And I'm always the person who's like, I feel like books are always a little bit better than like whatever was really was filmed because there's so much more detail in the books usually. So yeah, if you're interested in that kind of like scarier stuff, definitely check out Dexter if you haven't. If you have, let me know what you think of Dexter. Do you love it as much as I seem to? And then last thing is a couple music recommendations. So the first is a band called Foster the People. They have an album that I've been listening to lately, which is called Sacred Hearts Club. There's a lot of good songs on there. One of my favorites is Lotus Eater, Pay the Man, and um, is it All of My Friends or I Love My Friends? Those three songs on that album are great, my favorites on there. And then all of their music's really good. They um, they released the album called Torches, which with the with the song Pumped Up Kicks on it, which I think everybody knows by now. And then the other band is Cage the Elephant, and they've been around forever, but their album Social Cues, I've been listening to it on repeat. Um, the songs are great. The lyrics are really good. Each song kind of tells its own little story. My favorites are Tokyo Smoke, House of Glass, and Broken Boy. I'd say those three, but all of them are awesome. Anyways, I just wanted to give you guys like a little tidbit of like a couple things I've been interested in personally. And I should be posting like an actual themed video soon. So stay tuned. If you liked this video and you aren't already, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it like this video, say hi to me. As always, I love to talk to you guys and hear what, what you're up to. Let me know how your holidays went. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.